Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, the number one place to learn about how to be more disability inclusive and also how to know how to teach your kiddos to be more disability inclusive. My name's Tina and I'm here to share with you my five top tips on how to teach disability inclusion. Tip number one, you need to front load with your kiddo. You are gonna have to have conversations with your child before you get out and about and see somebody in a wheelchair or somebody with a cane or with special needs. The best way for me, I think, to do this with kids is by reading great books. I will link some great books down in the comments. Some of my favorites are When Charlie Met Emma by um, Amy Webb, Hi, I'm Mariah, Reading books about kids with special needs is going to help your kiddo be um, more comfortable asking questions with you. And you're going to be able to have these conversations before you're in front of somebody else. They'll be able to kind of ask the questions that they have and you'll know what direction that they want to go with things. So definitely use picture books. You can also use other videos. I think real life examples of kids in wheelchairs and stuff is a great idea. I'll link my day in the life of video. That's an awesome video just to kind of see what life's like with for Noel and for siblings and just how we all interact together. So my number one tip is first you need to front load with your child before you ever meet somebody with special needs. Tip number two, when you are out and about and your child sees somebody who is different or special needs, a disability, first thing you need to teach them to do is to learn a name. Names are important because everybody has one. And so it's a great way to start with your child on a place of realizing we have similarities. We're all the same. And a name is so awesome. So instead of teaching your kiddo, don't stare, teach them, let's ask what their name is. That is a great way to break the ice and anybody is going to want to tell them their name. I mean, you know, the name is like the most awesome word in the human language to a person is their name. So definitely ask the name first and that will put you at ease and will put the other person at ease. My third tip in teaching disability inclusion is to highlight similarities. Have your child ask the other person about things that they might like or have in common. Like, um, do you like to go bowling? Or what's your favorite color? Questions that are make us similar. Questions that help your child realize that this person is more like me than maybe I think. Also, it gives that person the, the ability to share about themselves as a person. Um, you wanna talk about the things they like to do and the things that, that they um, do for fun, their likes, their dislikes, those kind of things. Also, a question I get all the time is, who do I ask? Do I ask the caregiver or do I ask the person? You always, always, always ask the person. Don't ever ask the caregiver. That is just disrespectful and not okay. You ask the person, and if they are unable to answer, then of course the caregiver is gonna come alongside and help them answer, but you need to give them the dignity of talking to them and allowing them to answer the question. So definitely teach your child to answer, to ask the person the question. Now you may have to model asking the question for your child. If your kiddos are anything like my kiddos, they're gonna not wanna do it. And so we have to model it for them. We would, it would go like this. Oh, hey honey, do you wanna ask so-and-so their name? And your child's probably gonna look at you and go, no. Okay, well, do you want me to ask him for you? Sure. And then you would say, hi, what's your name? And then you're gonna do the same thing with the similarities. Hey, do you wanna ask them what their favorite color is or what they like to do, their favorite subject in school? And again, you're probably gonna to have to model it for them first until they start feeling more comfortable and a little less shy to ask those questions. Tip number four, once you've asked names, you've built a little rapport and you've asked about similarities, then I do believe it's okay to ask about things in a very respectful and nice way. For instance, if you were meeting my daughter, Noelle, and you had already asked her name, you would ask what grade she's in, what school she goes to, the things that she likes to do, and then you said, so can you tell me about her cool pink wheelchair? Then I would be willing to share about Noelle and her wheelchair. But I like to say it in that, in that way, like, can you tell me about? Not, so why are you in a wheelchair? Or what's wrong with you? Those questions are not acceptable and they're rude. So the approach and the tone that you have a question is very important. Now granted, I do know plenty of people who don't necessarily want to share about why they're in a wheelchair or what's going on. I, on the other hand, have also met people who don't mind sharing. So you may meet somebody who doesn't really want to share, but if you ask them like, 
hey, can you tell me about your wheelchair? And then they don't want to, they can just say, no, actually, I, I don't feel like it. Great, no problem, nobody, no awkward thing was said, nobody's feelings are hurt, you can move on. And if they are willing to share, then they'll absolutely start sharing with you. So I think that's a great approach to starting to ask questions. Tip number five, always be kind. No matter what, you have to realize that these are people. They are people and they have a story and a life and guess what, maybe they don't have time to talk to you, maybe they're in a hurry, or maybe they've been talked to very rudely by people. Maybe they have their defenses up and maybe, you know, they don't, they're not going to be open to you. Or maybe it's a parent whose child has gotten laughed at or stared at, or, you know, just feels like you have no business talking to them. So you may come up against that. But the thing is, if your approach and your tone and you're teaching your child how to be kind and loving, then there's nothing lost. You were just trying to approach somebody in a really kind way. Now, if somebody does come across as annoyed or upset by you, please don't take it personally. It is not, it is not you. It is not your problem. It is, it is the things that our culture has um, done to create this. Our culture hasn't been very disability inclusive. We haven't been taught or trained how to do things. So we have no idea, you have no idea how many hundreds of people before you have come to them in rude ways, have um, just been not cared about them and, and asked them bad questions and all those things. So please, please don't take it offensively. And like I said, I think that somebody their heart would really want to be to share, but maybe they're too busy or maybe something else is going on. If you would like a free copy of my five tips, then go ahead and follow the link in the comments. Also, if you have any questions, please leave them below. If there's a way, if there's something I can address for you, a question I can answer, especially from parents on how we together can teach our kiddos to be more disability inclusive, please leave them below. This is where I get all of my content so that I know what answers, I, what questions there are and what answers I need to bring you. So I, um, I appreciate you guys watching and if you wanna follow along any of my other videos, they're down below and you can watch some of the other ones too. Thanks guys.